my whole life is an M. Night Shyamalan tale. All right. Well, uh, here every we go, week babe. is a new. Do you Do like the Twilight Austin? Zone? Do you like the Twilight Zone? <laughs> you know what? You... This is not my show, so start the way you start. No, we. this is it. So <laughs> I have questions for you. Um, and I was, you know, I've, I've known you for a long time and I've worked with you several times mm -hmm. on some television programs and yeah. whatnot. And I've never really analyzed your body because to me, when I look at you, you're like, um, you're around. Around? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Around. Like, you're it around. Like, you know what I mean? I, I know that you're around, but I don't analyze you. Yeah. It's just like, you right. don't really know. I'm beginning to think you're a little person <laughs> <laughs> because I looked at your body just now. I go. Everything's just so small and cute and compact, right? Are you a little person? I am not legally a little person. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm five feet tall, like Ooh. Shakira. Is Shakira five feet tall? Four, four eleven. Shakira's four eleven. Yeah, I could you know, snap her. She is so successful. She like she writes all her stuff. Shakira is really a queen. She's great. <laughs> <laughs> At four eleven, she is a queen and not a little person. So you're not a little person, and uh, so um, but you have you could you go to the like little people like stores like is there like a little petite gap? Petite. petite. What's your shoe size? It's a five. It's very small. It's very it's rare. It's pretty big for five foot tall. No, mo most people my height are are bigger than that. My best friend, she's five two. She has a five. She That's wears kids kid sizes. Kids three. Yeah. May I give you a compliment? Yeah. Okay. I've never seen your profile before. Oh my god! Okay, I'm so uncomfortable. No, 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 no! I'm being real. Okay, I've never seen your profile before. Number one, you would look really good at, on a penny. <laughs> <laughs> Why a penny and not because, a good nose, good chin? Yeah, yeah. Because your profile, yeah. Because I don't have a good chin. Yeah, so you'd look good on a penny. In fact, I would. I'd be if you were on a penny. I would be a penny collector. Are you like, is Bobby hitting on me? No, Maybe. no, that, that's I'm not me hitting on you. <laughs> so no, no, first of all, can I always say this? There is absolutely nothing sexual about you. <laughs> when I look at you, my dick goes inside my body, out of my butthole. <laughs> <laughs>
I'll say something stupid like, hey, after this party or, you know what I mean? After this, you want to wrestle? <laughs> like something funny. Yeah. If they don't jive with that, yeah. I'm out. Right? How hey, do you play chess? Or something like that. And they're like, yeah, I know how. I got a chess board. You want to play? Yeah, you're something so sweet. Can sweet. I ask, like, can I ask you? Yeah, go ahead. How do you find the girl who you know you're on her menu? Because they're looking at me. Mm. Oh. No, but not in a, a, a this I get this a lot right okay. if I walk into a restaurant and nobody knows who I am this is what people do they go <laughs> <laughs> well they'll do like a double like you know what I mean oh I saw it I gotta see it again but make a face <laughs> so it's like this it's like oh, uh, and they gotta send the message like no you're yeah, not no they, they will never you know what I mean yeah yeah right but the girls that like me go like this they go ah <laughs> I know the girls are like that like you. Yeah, they're, yeah. They're, they're not okay in the head. What Except are they like? Me. One time we were in Portland and this girl, um, very cute blonde girl, she was like, I bought us nipple tassels. Do you want to have dinner afterwards? Like they're just very forward mm. with him. Not, she didn't know that I was his okay. girlfriend. So like to be fair, like that was not her fault. But she just came in and she was like, I bought nipple tassels. Do you want to try them on me? And well, I was like. I, I was at the San Jose Improv. Yeah. I don't know if I told you this. And there was just a girl in the green room. Yeah, a blonde girl. Uh -huh. And she's like, she's breathing heavy. Yeah, that's generally what likes me. <laughs> Where they breathe heavy. Mouth breather. I yeah. feel like you're describing me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So she's just like, like she got because it's hard to get up there. Yeah. You know, you know, Did you have she to go have through her mouth guard with her. <laughs> Was she wearing diapers? Yeah. No. You have to go through three. Did she you know forget her inhaler at home? <laughs> You got to go through three security situations to get to that green room. <laughs> three checks. So she yeah. kind of Ethan Hunt her, her yeah, way yeah. out there, right? Impressive. So she's, I don't know if it's because it took her a long time to figure out how to get up there or yeah. she's just a heavy breather, you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. But she's just like, I was such a good big fan of years. And, you know, I just, I, you know, I'm not like the regular uh, fans or people that bought the tickets, you know, I'm a super fan and I just needed to talk to you and meet you, right? And yeah. I was with Nick Yusuf or something like that. Mm -hmm. And then the uh, manager came in. She he goes out <laughs> to her. I go well. She seems nice. You know what I mean? Out. So she she leaves. Security takes her. She he goes. She's here every weekend. <laughs> <laughs> and so you I called Steve because she did that to Steve Ron Azizi. Yeah. So I called Steve Ron Azizi uh -huh. and I go, dude, that blonde show. He's like, me too. That's so funny. She's the heavy breather. I go, yeah. Were you sad when you found out? That's what I can get. One time we were <laughs> at San Francisco at, um, what was a, a small club there? Punchline. Battery line. Street, Punchline. Punchline. And there was this, I guess she was a friend, an acquaintance of his a couple of years ago. But she, again, she didn't know that I was his girlfriend. He, she just thought I was a rando in the green room. And she was like, you take this picture of me and him and then shoo away. And she shooed yeah, me yeah. the fuck away. So I, do you know what I did? I took the picture and I shoot away. Yeah, she did. Yeah. I was like, yeah, of course, no problem. Because I wanted her to feel so embarrassed after he, when I leave the room and saying, oh yeah, I gotta get back to my girlfriend now. That is a, you know what? You're fucking a sneaky bitch. I am a sneaky bitch. That is like, that's what she just explained is like, and I know, cause I'm a sneaky bitch. That's like sick. It is sick. It's very it's sick. It's a different level of satisfaction when someone looks so stupid rather than confronting them. Confronting them, they can just say sorry. Being a sneaky bitch, then they feel so stupid. So stupid. How do you flirt? Um, or do you not need to because you're so pretty? She's hot. Oh, yeah. please. <laughs> so why do I ask? She's I, I'm hot. really bad. I don't do like sexual undertones. I don't do any of that. She's hot. <laughs> what are you Shut up. Do? I've had to try a lot. I've been you rejected a lot. You don't have to try, lady. What the fuck? <laughs> I have been rejected. You're not like us. Esther, yeah. I want to know. <laughs> All right. This is I, a diff. That's why you're. We're here and you're there. That's not true. I think Esther. Esther, if I was into pussy, you would be on my secret menu. What? Yuck! <laughs> Yuck! Yuck! <laughs> Let me say this, okay? The She's reason why Esther girl. and I have to do stand up and all this other bullshit, right? It's because we're fucking because ugly. Because we're fuck nothing. <laughs> we're fuck nothings. Uh, that should be our podcast when we start one. The fuck nothings. <laughs> All right, we, we, right? When we wake up, we hear this song. Follow the yellow big road. I mean, we follow, we hear like things, you know what I mean, that you don't hear. Well, In your head is a rye song or something cool. You know what I mean? 
We're off to see the wizard. That's our song. Now listen. Wait, I want to know how she flirts. Yeah, how do you flirt? I Break it down. I, let, let's reenact it. I'm at a yeah, bar. Okay, there okay. We go. I'm at a bar, You're right? You're both on each other's secret menu. You're right. Wait, we're, I just want the secret menu reference. I've yeah. never felt so seen. Yeah, you, yeah. You get it. I get well, it. I'm not, I'm not for everyone, but for when the, you find the right people, mm -hmm. it works. Okay, so. No, the, uh, let's act it out. Okay. All right, so I'm at a bar. Hey, I'm Bobby. Hi, Mister. Hey, come. What are you What are you doing here? You You alone? Uh, um, I guess so. Yeah, I was with my friends, but they are cooler than me, so they're talking to people. Whatever. Uh. Yeah. <laughs> Can I buy you a drink? Oh, um. Okay, so I don't drink, but like that doesn't mean I don't want you to buy me a drink. <laughs> I. <laughs> this is This is what you're gonna hear. <laughs> Why? That's my dick going down. Why? <laughs> Why? Oh, you're That's right. So you're right. You're right. You're right. Well, you're, she's playing coy and cute. You're playing right cute. Now. All right. All right. All right. I'm still, you're right. I still have a hard lesbian hard on for you. No, but can I? I feel like my tactic is better explained than shown. All I right. Think. Explain, explain it first tactic. and then show it. Okay. I feel like that was really working for me. It was working. Really? It was yeah. working. So explain it first and then we'll go back in. Okay. So I learned this on accident. But basically, I for me, when you're in my when you're the my part of the menu, you act like you're not interested, but you're you're just trying to make a friend. So I I will treat the guy that I want to hit on the same way I would treat like a, a cool person that mm -hmm. I'm trying to make friends with. You're just super normal and friendly, and like that's it. That's it. Only in your head, I just want this person to be my friend. I just want this person to be my, be my friend. Nothing romantic, nothing sexual, and then that has worked for me. Somebody told me once that you like your asshole eat. Oh my god! <laughs> Wait, what, where's the shame in that? I do too. No, but you're, like you're just she, the only guy who will no, do no, it. no, like it's I got out you, there. Esther, no, I got no, you. no, no, I it's no. It's wrong. Asshole eat. No, it's, but what? I'm not gonna say the person's peace people peoples. Also, shame on that person for fucking no, no but it's all in telling. It's not. He Listen, has it if wrong. You eat, if you let me just say this. Let's go back to a restaurant restaurant analogy. Okay. Mm -hmm. If I eat an average hot dog at a hot dog stand, right? <laughs> I'm gonna be like, I'm not gonna tell anybody about it, right? Mm -hmm. The only way I could tell somebody to go to this hot dog stand is if this hot dog was the best hot dog I've ever eaten. Mm -hmm. That's how people explain eating a rascal. Oh, no. I feel like that's the title of my bi biopic. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Why eating an average even... hot dog for eight years. <laughs> <laughs> That's Fuck my you. biopic. Do you a favor. Fuck you. I'm sorry. You're right. You're yeah, right. Yeah, 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 yeah. You're doing me a favor. Why won't he eat your ass? Um, he's just that's just not his She's thing. a hot girl. That's like I know. Even if I were to spread it, even if it was nicely <laughs> soaped and scrubbed with oh, a brillo. Oh, really? Pad, Last night? You know, I, okay, uh, let's I get I hate to, your flirt sexual tactics. Fuck you, fuck you. Last he does. night, right? She he, goes Like a kid, he will like bop you wet will you and he thinks that I'm supposed now, to not have sex after that. This is not what I'm doing. You go bop. I don't do bop. Astrid, this is what I did last night. You know that machine? The massage machine that yeah, you guys the, got? Yeah, yeah. yeah. You the all got one, yeah. Yeah. right? She goes, do this on my leg, right? So I go, she had her legs out and her underwear. So she's kind of, you know. So I I'm, really wanted a massage. I know, so I, I'm using the machine, right? Uh -huh. But while she, I'm doing it, I'm. No, but see, he wasn't even <laughs> kissing my leg. Like Gina Darling said, he was kissing the bed. No, I was kissing your you're, ass. You, you weren't. You were like kissing the sheets. No, I was kissing your ass, and you're like, you know, I was kissing your ass, and you're like, that does. I don't want that right now. I was. I'm sore. I need a real massage. There's a time for that. But see, you're not being very truthful. Uh, Other times you do bop and wet willy. But last night I didn't, and don't. Anyway, Esther. So you're. Right, you're what, what's a signal that you give your partner? What's the correct way to signal your to to signal a partner? Just speak in general, <laughs> that sex is impending that something is gonna is about to happen <laughs> like text like hey want to have sex meet in the bedroom uh, oh that's good can i ask you about your asshole yes so you are <laughs> you are obsessed with this whole narrative for years you've brought this up <laughs> for years because i've heard about his legend for years, you bring up this narrative that you are just attached to by just so tightly that yes, guys in the past have have been drawn towards eating my ass. The guys I've dated, I I moved out here to L.A. I was fresh from Skokie, Illinois. Nobody had ever even tried to do that, so I was very surprised when I started dating, and guys just went straight for it. And I was like, wow, like why? Yeah, it was very new to me. It was exotic. And then it just became something like it was like a talking point. Like, wow. 
No, it was explained to me. I'm sorry. I like to. Okay, shame again. Shame on that person for detail. It was not just exactly. one person. No, well, I want to hear this. Several people. <sighs> I'm angry for you. I know. I know. Several people. All right. I'm if it was just one, I would just let it go as hearsay. Okay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> all right. She she threatens litigation. By the way, yeah, so yeah. I would be. And I'm not naming names, so that so there, no, there's no right. legal matter uh -huh. here. Okay, but several folks said that I know Bobby, you don't like eating ass. I go, I don't like it. They go, but that you would. And I'm like, that always struck they me. They did as, not say yes, that. Yes, yeah. So that no, always, they did yes, not. That always you struck have me as a yes. mythical ass. No, that, they that, did that, not. Yeah, 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 yeah. What does so, your asshole look like that it's so, so that's fucking what, mystical so and that legendary? For me, it's always been what's down there. <laughs> MSG? Esther, no, MSG. I, I want to know. Yeah, yeah. Is it no. a different color or flavor? What no, is it? No, it's just somebody was hyped on me and they were All just right. bragging about me. And yeah. that's what it was. All that right. is a crazy thing to say. Yeah. I'd be proud of it. Yeah. All buttholes are the same. <laughs> I no, guess, I, apparently turns not. Out they're not. Apparently not. <laughs> turns out there are levels to this game. There's levels to this. So, um, back to me real quick. <laughs> um, and everyone w wondering why is Bobby in on, <laughs> on this podcast right now? And I, I and I have to say, to be honest, um, I had to strike a deal. It took a lot of begging. <laughs> it took a lot of begging. At first, I was like, "Fuck no, get that lady, <laughs> get that lady out here." Yeah. And you're like, "She has cluster clusters," and I go, "No, no." But anyway, I go. In order for me to do this, I get five get days mm -hmm. of uninterrupted, uninterrupted. You saw things that unerect. <laughs> unerect and uninterrupted video game time. You, yeah. All right. No massages. No massages. Because every night I have to fucking massage her, and it drives me crazy. It's just the feet. And <laughs> and for ten number, minutes. No, it's not for ten minutes, babe. And you, and also, it, what's bullshit about it is is that you, if I don't do a good job, you let me know. I give you a grade. <laughs> right. So it's a grading that, system. I'm she'll go sorry. like I'll do forty five minutes. She's like, nah, that wasn't your best. I'm like, <laughs> fuck you. I always say things like, wow, you've changed. You've changed, yeah. <laughs> So, but the third thing is that I wanted Hollywood pie. Mm -hmm. Oh. So it's that time. Order me a pizza. Okay. I'm just shocked and in awe over the negotiation system you guys have in play. There is no leverage in my life that I could ever use to get a favor out of Dave. Give us an example of what you really wanted and what you didn't get. I, I could say like, please this time clean blank or like... I, Oh, help me, help me with this rewrite or whatever it is I'm working on. Please, 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 please. Like, I need it right now. He'd just be, I'll be like, I'll do anything. And he'd just be like, there's nothing you can do. <laughs> there's, no, and because he won't trade um, tasks for sexual favors, mm. which I hate because that's what I used to do. That's how I got all my history homework done in high school. He won't, he's like, I think that's like, he like draws a line there. Mm. You know, he doesn't want to feel like I'm doing something. What if you, we'll figure it out. What, what if you frame it like? Most? What if you frame it like this? Dave, help me with this rewrite, and I'll give you the best blowjob. Oh my god! You've ever had in your life. I think that he would help you. Have you ever used that, Esther? The best. Have you ever used the word no. the best blowjob? Blow job. The best. I I really don't like overselling myself. <laughs> so that's that a lot would, of pressure. That's a lot that of pressure. That would be like yeah yeah. yeah. I don't know because you're doing things that you've never done before, and you look you're gonna feel ridiculous. I yeah. don't like. I didn't. I'm not up to speed on like keeping it hot in the bedroom. Like mm. I'm 33. Like I feel like that was like a young girl's game, and I'm just kind of like that is a young it girl's is what game. it is. Beach to completion is a young girl's game. Mm. I yeah, don't do that. Yeah. I have TMJ. My jaws are old and tired. Or Although, you, you know what you could do? Fine. What is Help me with this rewrite and just pull out your asshole. He'd be like, oh, uh, he'll go fucking hog wild. <laughs> you know what's really sad about all of this is that I feel as though if I had offered that to you to do yeah, but this I show, don't, you'd be like, nah. You don't have her asshole. <laughs> That's true. From what it I is, hear, yeah. right, true. through the rumor mill, it's fucking grade A shit right here, baby. <laughs> Support for Bloodbath is brought to you by Manscaped, who is the best in below-the-waist grooming and hygiene. And ladies, listen up. Manscaped offers precision engineered tools for you and your man's jewels. Manscaped is trusted by over 2 million men worldwide. So why not trust it for your man too? Manscaped has created the best ball hair trimmer. <laughs> very, very important to sustain this relationship I have with Bobby Lee. Really? Absolutely. 
We have an exclusive offer for our listeners, 20% off plus free shipping with the code bloodbath at manscaped.com. The Lawn Mower 3.0 is their third generation trimmer that features a cutting edge ceramic blade to make sure that the man in your life reduces grooming accidents. I have to say, I feel like Manscaped has really, they did it. They figured it out. Mm-hmm. It, it works. No nicks, no cuts, just a no nice, complaints. No or complaints or anymore. I love Bobby's smooth balls. It makes <laughs> me feel as though he respects me more as a woman and cares about my well-being. So guys and ladies. If you want to feel smooth and sleek mm-hmm. and chic. Hand it over to him and say, babe, this is for you. You guys get 20% off and free shipping with the code bloodbath at manscaped.com. That's 20% off with free shipping at manscaped.com and use code bloodbath. Unlock your confidence and always use the right tools for the job with Manscaped. And if you've been thinking about Manscaped, now's the time to support the bloodbath babes and use our code bloodbath. You just have to find something that Dave loves more than sex. Do you know that? Because I know his the top five what? things. Yeah. What are they? Hollywood pie that he loves more why, than sex. But okay, so great, great example, follow up question. Why can't he just have that every day? Uh, he's not allowed. I, I I make a scene. Really? Oh, wow. It's so bad for me. I'm going to get a heart yeah, attack. It's, it's, it's a deep dish pizza. And then because none, Jules and I don't eat it with him. So now he has just I an eat the whole thing. pizza for himself. And so oh. I, I get on his ass about. Um, did you order Did you order it? I haven't because we're recording. What do you no, want to do? No, you didn't order George? it now so that when I'm done with this, I can get it. Well, here's George Kimmel for that job. So, yeah. So t- the five things that Dave would like. Mm-hmm. So what Beyond are the things? The sex. Beyond sex. Uh, I guess like. Uninterrupted reading time. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! Is there something that he does for you that he doesn't necessarily like, but he? No, but him? you know what sucks about that is, is that it makes me think that when he's reading, you interrupt him all the time. <laughs> <laughs> he's like, "I'm reading." <laughs> you, you know, why would you interrupt a man when he's reading? Because he's doing it all the time. All right. Oh, all right. Well, he okay. So he loves to sleep. Mm-hmm. As okay. we know, he has sleep apnea, so he has sleep issues. He needs a lot of sleep. But I let him sleep all day. Well, then that's not a thing. That's not a thing you can use as a Something bargaining Something you leverage chip. that you don't allow him to do, but you're going to allow him to do it. I allow him to do everything he wants in COVID because I... How about s- this? You did threaten to crash his all boys weekend in Palm Springs. That's true. And then he begged you, Esther, you cannot. And then- Well, he got really firm. He said, if you show up to the boys weekend in Palm Springs, no questions asked, our relationship is over. Okay, well, that's something to use as a bargaining chip. Look, Dave, I will never threaten to crash any future boys weekend if you do this. You know what I'm thinking? Because he's been playing golf a lot lately is like, I'll just start to act annoyed when he's going to play golf. That's it. Yeah. That's yeah. it. That's the smart way. And then, so it's like, uh, okay, like, no, it's fine. It's fine. So then I'll I'll use golf as like a tool, a lever, a piece of leverage. Mm-hmm. Like, you can go play golf. Yeah. You just got to take some things back. Yes. I've been given too much. That's yeah. what it is. Yeah. Wow. That's smart. Mm-hmm. I've been giving too much. What? Yeah. <laughs> you have been given too much. There's only a no, few I things I can really. No, I should not give you that kind of room over me. Uh-oh. What are you talking about? Well, she's just you keeping get to you live healthy. Like, yeah, you you get to live like a king for the next five days. I get to fucking just sit and die a miserable woman in a dark hole somewhere in this house. But why do you care when he's playing video games? Because he does it for 20 hours a day and he will blow off any responsibility and he will throw all his <laughs> trash all over the house. He'll let his toenails grow out. It's He becomes a gargoyle. It, it's uh, an addiction. It's a true addiction, Esther. He won't, yeah. it, like, basically this whole space here would be a dumpster if we, I let him just run free with a video game play. You know, one time I came into this garage and there was, a, like, a couple cups sitting out that had been there for a while. And mm-hmm. there was there's a growth and a stench. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. And Kalai was like, oh, Bobby was in here last night. Yeah, it took yeah. me two days to air out this space and you still came in and smelt it. That's how, that's, that's what we're looking at here. <laughs> Uh, that's what I get. That's what you get. That face. <laughs> How do you guys keep sex fresh this many years in? 
<laughs> we're the wrong people we're the wrong to ask. People to ask that. No, but I don't think that's true because I think you guys are very sexual and you have role plays. No, we have. We, uh, okay, well, I don't want to. Let's dive in. When we do have sex, it's literally the best. It is. It's great. It is porn worthy. It. Yeah, it's porn worthy, but it's but like we should do it more often. We should be doing it more Everybody often. Everybody feels that way. I think. But the quality is good. Is good. Like I would rather have what we have than having to just like you know put out every single day and have like vanilla sex. It's it, it, it's a big production it, with it, us. Yeah, it's also, you know, especially during the pandemic, I have to say that it's a difficult thing to navigate because Kalila and I aren't only, only lovers. We're also best friends. She's my only real friend, right? And she's the only one that I trust implicitly. And she is now up there in terms of my world, right? He, she's in that sphere of my mom and my brother, who are the only family members that are alive. You know, when you have, I've never been in a relation this this relationship this long, and um, so it's hard to navigate. We also, you know, there is something about not seeing somebody for a while and that mm -hmm. mystery, mm -hmm. right? Like if I was going on the road, right, and out of town a lot more often, and there was a little bit more space, maybe there would be a little bit more mystery. But but because of this pandemic, you know, I've seen this lady twenty four seven. Every day for months and months and months and months. You know what I mean? And you know, you get on people's nerves. We get on each other's nerves. Yeah. The Don't you and Dave aren't you and Dave like that? Yeah. We spend we're in separate rooms a lot, separate wings. We it, yeah, I, I get frustrated when couples have like say like, Oh yeah, we have sex three times a week and I'm just Oliver like Oliver Hudson. What? Drives me crazy. He's always bragging about oh yeah. I I, I had sex with my wife in a uh at the you know on, on on the beach or whatever we went to Santa Monica one night and three in the morning we just had sex on the beach it's like and they've been together forever and it's like some people are like that I just don't find that to be realistic or relatable to like I don't know I That's think it's not relatable for me at all I think I'm really intrigued by you guys though because you guys do intense role play and I've only d dabbled in it and whenever I do I really like it but I have a hard time getting back into it because I'm like nervous and embarrassed. Well, well, is, well, Dave, is Dave good Wait, at it? Wait, tell, well, I want you to tell Bobby exactly what, well, the only character you play in role play. Yeah, I want to know. Neighborhood girl. What, oh, what is that? So it's like you show up and you're like, oh, hey, like I was locked out of my house. Like, oh, you know, it's kind of like I'm like a scammer. I'm uh, like, hey, like I need a place to stay. How old are you in this in this scenario? Like my, around my age, I'm living it's not. <laughs> oh, well, you say neighborhood girl. Yeah, neighborhood girl does sound um, yeah. young, but it. Well, you you and I do age stuff. I'm the young guy. You're the older one, and I That's never had sex before. That's and Brandon, I, his and name I, is Brandon. And Brandon, and I always say He's like, a "Virgin, thanks for thank you so. This feels so good. Thank you so much for doing this. I'm a cougar. Yeah, she's a cougar." And yeah, and then she'll and then she'll uh, just I could see her just just like dig in my claw. Yeah, yeah, she, 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 you know what I mean. <laughs> and I'm I'm Brandon, I'm Brandon, and, I, and I'm like, oh, <laughs> this is this is different. Also, one time I don't know if we said this, but um, I just sucked my penis like you, like some other guy, like it's some other actor that you like, <laughs> and you sucked it ten times better. <laughs> She was like doing shit, like, you know what I mean? And I was like, whoa, whoa, whoa. If you say Benicio Del I was Toro, just gonna say that. I will, honestly, I will go balls deep, baby. Yeah. Balls deep. I heard he's pretty dirty, though. I love, that's exactly why I no, like, like him. No, like, I heard from a girl, probably hearsay again, but um, he is a spitter. Oh, that, what's oh, a spitter? Like, <laughs> and spits in the, in the hole. Ew. I, I mean, I mean <laughs> it's called I, I mean, lube. You, you cannot possibly but, turn okay, me off. Spit is fine, but to go <laughs> <laughs> that means you're getting a like a chunk oh, out yeah, of their yeah. lung. Oh, they're long. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah lung right. tissue. Maybe I'm doing it wrong. I'm not, I didn't. I wasn't there when it happened. You know what I mean? <laughs> what is what? What role plays do you prefer? Anybody but himself. <laughs> <laughs> if he shows up as Bobby Lee, I'm out. <laughs> He's got to come in ready as somebody else you know it's funny that you say that <laughs> it's funny that you say that and I, i'm chuckling in the inside <laughs> <laughs> i have to say but um you know i i look at photos of us when we were younger together like eight years ago mm -hmm. and um we were younger we looked different we acted different we acted different we looked different mm -hmm. and you know it's an inevitable thing that people change. 
Mm-hmm. Some people grow apart, you know. But I think we've changed with each other. I think so too. Yeah. But the problem with us is that, hey. like, <laughs> is that we both we've both. And when we first met, let's 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 agree that there was a high level of toxicity, probably just because I was very like in the middle of, you know, didn't couldn't figure out my life yet. Same mm. with you. He was in a really low point in his career. There was a high level of toxicity. <laughs> oh, I was dead. What do you mean? My career was dead, man. There's, I remember like one time he, for five days, he was like, I hope I get that job. I hope I get that job. And it wasn't even a paid job. It was just like a, um, being part of this sketch that Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So there, I, met, I was at the comedy store once. And I felt so And bad. this English guy was like, hello. <laughs> and I go, hi. He goes, I just saw you on set, on, on stage, and I'm doing a sketch show. I go, really? What is it? Tell me more. He's like, yeah, I'm just doing one. <laughs> you know what I mean? And he just was shooting some random thing. Like right? just for Probably yeah, like YouTube thing. Yeah, some YouTube thing. And I was just like so excited about it. Like that's where I was in my career. I just thought it was like I was dying. I kind of remember you in that era. You And I, I remember you like kind of alluding to that a lot. And I was always confused by it. But it was weird. It was like um, at one point in my career, I was I felt like I was on fire. And then at one point, I just really thought I was just never going to get back. Mm-hmm. And it, it, you could feel it in my road numbers. You could feel it in terms of the type of auditions I was getting. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like it is. It does feel like back then, if you were down, you it felt like you really were going to stay down. But it seems like now, and maybe this is just like me like being in the business for a, like a longer time, it feels like it, you really can go down and up and down and up again, right? But I, I love I love a good fixer upper. <laughs> really? It's my thing. Like my best yeah. friend always says Ugh. this. I'm the number one, number two. Mm-hmm. I am the best at being someone's number two. Mm-hmm. Like I just, there is nothing more gratifying to me than seeing like raw talent and making sure that I'm writing their coattails, but I'm making sure that they get there. Number one, you're and both. You're two. both right. So what you just said right there is is that yeah, you're right. I, what I didn't know at the time, where in everyone's career, remember there was a time where Neil Patrick Harris was in everything. He was in everything, and then not so much, right? Yeah. I just feel like everyone's career does that, yeah. right? In life, in any occupation that you have, right? You have highs and lows. But I didn't know that. Mm -hmm. You know, you just assume that this is going to be my reality forever, right? So during that time, I needed somebody to show me that it can go back up again, right? And then then that's what was vital about you, you know? Yeah, and I have just no experience in the industry at all. I just watched a shit ton of And now she's fucking Miss Hollywood. Oh my God, It's very Kris Jenner to like find a broken man Mm -hmm. and then make him a star. Is it maybe time for a banana break? I think so. (laughs) It's your first banana break. I love it. I've had bananas before, but not on a break. Welcome in, babe. (gasps) Thank you, raspberries. Did you guys? Did you see how he just? What do you do? Throated that banana. He's like he's like a two bite banana guy. Oh Oh my my god. god! Bobby, do you remember? When we used to go out to dinner after comedy store with with people. Uh-huh. What? 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 We, we went to IHOP and Dupar's. You would always take us all out to buy know. us food. I know. Because I, you know, it's so funny. I learned something back then. Oh, in since I've been in LA, that I don't really like you. <laughs> And then let's be honest. Let, you know what you want? It's banana break. Can I be honest yeah, during yeah, the yeah. banana break, right? I really don't like you. I know. Yeah, no, I'm being real. I know. All right. There's something about you that just really irritates me. You know what I mean? I don't know what it is, but <laughs> but I have to say this. What I do, and I do something very shallow. And what I do is I go, I look at what's underneath me in terms of people that are coming up. And I kind of, in my own way, handpick who I think has a shot, mm-hmm. right? So even though I don't like you, 
I've always thought that you had a shot. That's a projection, though. I really, truly think that you see so much of yourself in Esther. Too much. What? Too Way much. too much. And he hates, he has a self-loathing issue yeah, yeah. and shame. You and I are very sensitive in the same ways. Yeah. And you've ca called me about, like, issues you've had. I know. You know what I mean? About, oh, I don't know, you know, this 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 job, I don't, I don't know if I'm going to get it or not. Or, I know. You know what I mean? Or... You, you know, gave me such good advice. You meant, I can't even believe the nice things you've done for me that I don't think you would ever do for me today. But back <laughs> in the day, you were so nice to me. You met me at Coffee Bean mm. and like helped me talk out this really big decision whether or not to do this reality TV pilot. Mm. And he was just like, you're an idiot. He was like, there's two categories, on the air and off the air. Be on the air. Mm. And he convinced me to do that. Mm. And I was like, that was such a generous... Yeah, I mean, I you know, I've had... And vice versa, I've had a lot of generosity from older people, right? That's helped me. Like I told you when I was living out of my truck at the comedy. I was living out of my truck. Are you? What is with these people? So I lived out of my <laughs> truck. You know, you could get a job. I know. <laughs> I know. Back like no, you don't have. To. I mean, nowadays because the fucking economy is so yeah, bad. Yeah. But but there was a time when I first moved to LA. And I don't know where I was going to stay, but I just knew that I was evicted from my place in San Diego. So there was a time where I slept in the truck. Hmm. So what, And I didn't have any money. And I remember one day, I get a knock on my window. It's about noon. I was sleeping. And it was Jimmy Schubert. And Shoes goes, um, hey, kid, you hungry? And I go, yeah. <laughs> I said it like that. And he Brandon. goes, let me buy you a sandwich. So we walked down the street. There was a sandwich. It's not longer there. He bought me like this nice sandwich for lunch. So, but I remember, I'll always remember that. I'll always remember him buying me that sandwich. So I always kind of looked at little things like that, right? And I, I learned from it so that, you know, I could help people, you know, if, if they have the ability. I think Jimmy always thought that I was funny. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? I think that if I wasn't funny, that he might have not. I don't know. You know what I mean? But, you know. Kalila, did you know that today's episode is sponsored by Blue Chew? I'm so excited. Say it with me. Blue Chew. Blue Chew. Blue Chew is making waves and bringing more confidence to the bedroom by offering chewable tablets that can help men get stronger and longer lasting E-R-E-C-T-I-O-N-S. -E Erections. <laughs> she won't say it, but I will. Erections. Blue Chew is a unique online service that delivers the same active ingredients as Viagra and Cialis, but in chewable form and at a fraction of a cost. Their tablets help men achieve harder, stronger erections to combat all forms of ED, erectile dysfunction. It happens to the best of us, guys. No shame in that. But head on over to Blue Chew. What I love about it is that the process is simple. Sign up at bluechew.com, consult with one of their licensed medical providers, and once you're approved, you'll receive your prescription within days. The best part is it's all done online. I love this kind of service. Everything is online. It's discreet. It's professional. They just make things really easy, and the best, easiest part is that it's chewable, and you don't have to swallow a dang annoying pill. Blue Chew's licensed medical providers work with you to find the right ingredient and strength for your prescription because everybody's different. And the tablets are made in the USA and they prepare and ship direct. So it's cheaper than a pharmacy. It's very, very, it's, I think it's very forward thinking. So you guys, if you could benefit from extra confidence when it's time to perform, visit bluechew.com for more details and important safety information. And we've got a special deal for our listeners. Try Blue Chew free when you use our promo code BATHGIRLS at checkout. Just pay $5 for shipping. That's bluechew.com with promo code BATHGIRLS to receive your first month free. And we thank Blue Chew for sponsoring this podcast. It's free. You pay $5 for shipping. Why wouldn't you do it? Did you see the Woody Allen thing? I did. How many episodes are there? Three. I didn't see the third one. You don't, yeah, okay. The, it's not like you've missed that much. Like you kind of, you know what's up. Yeah, but the first two were bangers. Do you? Uh, guys, I shouldn't say bangers. Do you think <laughs> when, it, when it comes to? <laughs> okay. Here's my question: <laughs> yeah. because do you think there's any chance that it's that he didn't do it? I'm just gonna tell you, I don't. It seems very obvious to me, but then there's a lot of people that say there's a a lot like this. This show is. Very one-sided, but I'm just curious what you guys think. As a child, well-documented, as a child that has been um, on the other side of sexual assault, I just know how sinister it can be 
and how family members can defend you and not defend you and even the people that you love like don't come to your defense like i very i felt very unsafe as a child so there is nothing to be had and nothing to be gained from saying somebody hurt me Mm-hmm. So unequivocally, a thousand percent, I believe that that's what went down. There's nothing to be gained from saying someone did that to you. Yeah, the 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 naysayers are saying like, oh, well, Mia Farrow has all these. The, there's other of her kids that say that she abused them and that she coached Dylan and oh, that she was complicit. That that Mia Farrow. This is the not what I believe, but like that she coach dylan into saying that she's like the scorn woman and she's so pissed so she like is doing this to turn on him does that make sense well i mean that i mean that could make sense because he he did you know i do i mean all this is not in question he's with sunyi yeah so that's not in question right yeah she is much younger than him yeah she was groomed she was groomed right so that that stuff is obvious i don't think anyone can right so i don't know what it's like you know if i was dating if I had, you know what I mean? Let's say I had a son that I raised from like Guatemala, let's just say, because I like the word Guatemala, mm-hmm. right? Great country. Right, and I little good, let's call him Tito. No, not Tito, Poto. Poto, his name is Poto. I have a son named Poto, and I got him at 12 from Guatemala, mm-hmm. right? He's great at soccer, he makes coffee really good. And um, so, um, and then I meet a girl online, right? Who's my age. Mm-hmm. All of a sudden, I find out, I see photos of Poto, right? With his dick out and she's sucking his dick, right? Mm. And all that stuff. The rage that I would feel. Imagine the rage, right? So I can't, in that situation, maybe I could make up some scandalous lie to hurt this person. Yeah, but would, why would you need to involve the kid? Like an, mm. an innocent child. Like, because that's a mother that loves her children. Why would I need to drag my child through this? It's really hard for me to believe that a, that, that a woman would do that. Okay, mm. uh, th- that's fine. But There's I'm, no record of I her mal- maltreating I her understand. Kids. I understand that. But what I'm saying is that it's not hard to believe. It is hard for me to believe. For you to believe it, right? It's not hard for me to believe Revenge it. is not a hard concept for me to understand. I just don't understand why she would have chosen that route to take revenge when there's multiple other ways. So here's my take on the Woody Allen thing, mm-hmm. okay? When I was growing up, I saw him and I went, he was the only person really in film that was that famous that I could relate to. Because he was ugly? That? <laughs> <laughs> that? Not only was he ugly, I, I I also like, you know, like I saw Dana Gould's, one of his very early Showtime specials mm-hmm. when I was in high school. And it was all about like his insecurities and self-loathing and neurosis, right? And anybody that portrayed all that kind of stuff, right, is somebody I could glom on to mm-hmm. because it's like, that's what I felt, right? I liked people that were like, you know, very insecure, and, and paranoid and, Jews. and neurotic. Jews. <laughs> She's coming with a Jew right, right. this week. <laughs> Jews, you're right. I'm lucky to have someone like Kalila because I feel impish and neurotic and ugly and all that kind of stuff, right? Uh-huh. So it, it's hard for me to believe why once he had Mia Farrow or any woman that would want to fuck that, right? That he would resort to any of this other fucking because pedophilia is a fucking sickness. It's an, a literal like a disease, like a mental it's, illness. It's it's a mental illness. Yeah, where our attention should be. What did the little girl say? Mm-hmm. At that age, it's, you're right. I'm not. You know, you're right. It, I believe he did it. And as an adult, she's still saying it. This was her experience. We don't we don't invalidate her experience. We say, oh, okay, that's and. I'm saying this from obviously like a very biased standpoint because when I told my parents that somebody had hurt me, my family's reaction was to not protect me, but was to cover it up. Yeah, when I told my dad I was molested by a guy with Down syndrome at rehab, he laughed in the in the counseling session. It is funny. <laughs> <laughs> right? Yeah. It sucks. He to me, I, I agree. Like he, he clearly did it. Why would this be? Mm-hmm. It, it, but it's so weird that there's so many arguments for that he didn't do it. Like a lot of people bring up, like, well, he was even mentioning this in an interview on, the, like, that they were showing an old interview of his. He's like, why would I just do it all of a sudden now? I've had opportunity, like. This this idea that this is the only one, so it's not true, which does suck. Like, 
it sucks that women have to almost like wait for others so that they can come forward because one yeah. voice mm-hmm. isn't enough. Mm-hmm. And it does make me wonder, like, yeah, maybe this was his only the only time. This was when he was close to a little girl. This was his shot. Like, I see that. Here's my real point, though. And this is something that, um, you know, I, I always say, has Tom Hanks ever been accused of anything weird sexually? Eating babies by QAnon, I think. Yeah, aside from the QAnon shit. Yeah. They're, Why do you love to give that credit? Yeah. I, well, you know, yeah, just yeah. throwing it Tom out Tom Hanks there. never ate a baby, okay? He hasn't eaten yeah, a baby. Right? So yeah. he's the most wholesome, yeah. right, guy out there, I think, one of them, right? He just seems like a nice guy, right? Mm-hmm. And there's never been any kind of accusations. Do you know why? why? There aren't any. Yeah. Not, he didn't do anything. Yeah. Right? There are just certain guys out there that like, you know, um, you know, Leonardo Di- Di- DiCaprio, right? <laughs> Leonardo DiCaprio, right? Is known to go- date 18, 19, 20-year-old model- models, models yeah, and models. stuff. That he's always uh-huh. on a boat somewhere in you know, Florence, Italy, or whatever uh-huh. it might be. Is Fl- Florence, is there water there? <laughs> Okay, good. So I don't want to sound like an idiot, right? And it's not, he's not going to argue that, right? Yeah. It's, he knows, right? It's not as anything, has he ever been accused of having sex with a 12 year old? Why? Because he's never did it. <laughs> he never did it, right? My point is, is that I think that certain, you know, rumors are there. Yeah, because, right? Because there's some scandalous. They don't moment. typically just come out of nowhere. Here is his age breakdown. Leonardo DiCaprio refuses to date a woman over 25. So this is a graph uh-huh. in relation to his age. Yeah. And, and that's the ages. So at 24, he dated 18. At 44, he dates 21. Well, there's some uptick. <laughs> some. The oldest he'll go is 25. <laughs> the oldest he's ever gone is 25. One of those girls on that chart went to high school with me. Oh, really? Oh, Erin really? Heatherton. Oh, wow. Did you know were you friends? No, but we. I. she's very lovely. But Bobby, I do you think- bre- You would break that chart. Bobby, I, <laughs> yeah. I think you're right. Like I, I, that was something I, another thing I learned when I moved to LA, like if there's rumors, they're usually- didn't just come out of nowhere. Where there's smoke, there's fire. Yeah. I, I'm curious to see is 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 his reputation damaged enough for him never to make movies again? I would I would think. I would think too. Yeah. Um also it's like take your millions and you know, live a good life. Nobody in wants obscurity. to do that. No one wants to do yeah, that. That's only you know who doesn't want to do that? A true narcissist. It's weird. I know. I, I literally I look at people who have like three million dollars and I'm like, just Move to Wichita yeah, and have please. a great time. <gasps> Let's give an example. Carlos Mencia. Mm. He has millions of dollars. Mm-hmm. And my brother one time told me, he goes, well, who gives a shit, man? He's got millions. He doesn't have to do it anymore. Right? But tell that to Carlos. You can't because the whole point is, you know, right now, I don't think I, ha- I don't have enough money to retire for the rest of my life. Right? But, you know, I'm still... You know, I'm getting jobs, you know, and I, I, can't, I can't imagine a life without, you know what I mean, getting these new jobs and opportunities and seeing how far I can go, right? It's like if one day they said, your voice is shot, you can't podcast anymore, you can't do stand-up, you can't act, you can't do any of it, right? But you have millions of dollars, good, you know, so there you go. I don't think I would be happy. I'd just be like, what am I going to do? I would. I'd be so happy. I'd yep. be like, oh my God, I get to rest. I get to try something new in my life. Garden. Build a farm, garden. You would, you, fuck you. <laughs> fuck you. Consider it early you, retirement. Fuck you, you would not. I know you. You would be so fucking miserable, you fucking lying lady. You're a lying lady. Be honest with me. I see both sides. No, I- no. If you had $30 million and then somebody said to me, right? Somebody said to me, somebody said to you, listen, you have, you, you can no longer talk. <gasps> Esther, what about this? No, I give, today, just, today, I give you thirty million dollars, Esther, but you have to retire from doing stand up, acting, any any stints in the future. You're done. I think just you, li- go live in obscurity. I would be so stupid not to take that deal. Okay, and then I'll, I'll I'm going to get the call eight years later. <laughs> she's in fucking Wichita, right? <laughs> and she's going to turn on the TV and see somebody that she's in competition with. That's a big TV star. Yeah, but not, still not that person doesn't have thirty million. It doesn't matter. She's gonna sit on her couch, right? And she's gonna be she's gonna weigh three hundred pounds by then. 
just this blob, this ester blob, right? Just right, and then she's gonna lift up her one slab, right? And little Dave's gonna be there sleeping, is sleep ap apnea under one of her fucking fat flobs, right? And you're gonna go, you're gonna go, Dave, Dave, he's, he's sleeping, right? And you're gonna call me and go, I just saw so and so on the thing, and you would fucking complain, and you'd be so fucking miserable. I. Okay, I think there's truth to that. I think 100%. I, I understand that. I would like to think and follow along with Coloco's plan. And I think you can do the work. I really, can I say something? I'm gonna, Go I'm gonna flex for a uh -huh. moment. Okay. I am so good at improvement. I have been, I started antidepressants. I see a therapist. I believe that I could take my millions, my my Kalila millions, and build out a life where I, it could work. Uh huh. I agree, Esther. There, there's could. no that I'm not going to get to thirty million on this path. I would great, amazing if if I get to any of a small amount of that. Why I think you're one job away from that. <laughs> That's negative. One you, more you episode of bloodbath away. <laughs> You got the poison in you. Yeah, you you're cannot, a poison. You want to I'm be not celebrated. Sick, I'm not as sick as you. <laughs> Whoa. Oh, I'm not as that, that, Yeah. You're uh, sick. Okay, I want to I want to say something to you. All right? All right? And let, let's just be real, okay? Okay. I've heard your phone calls to me. All right? <laughs> right? Because I was there listening, right? And the kind of shit, I'm not going to get specific, right? But the kind of shit, right, right, lets me, it's evidence. And, and it's also like, you know, you know, analytical, you know, stats, mm -hmm. stats, yes. uh -huh. right? I'm looking at the stats and the data, mm -hmm. right? And the data tells me, right, that she would hang herself from that Wichita house. <laughs> oh, oh, no. That's what the data tells me. Okay. So I don't know what you're trying to do now, right? What I'm going to say to you is, is that I think that you're, I've always said this about you that you are so unique, right? You really are. I, 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 in comedy, I don't know anyone like you, right? In terms of your persona, the way you deliver your jokes, the way you act, all that stuff, right? You're your own thing, which is great, okay? Thanks, Thanks Bobby. But you're a fucked up on the inside. <laughs> You really are so fucked up on the inside. Yeah. Okay. You, you ha yeah. Okay. Fair. Okay. Good. We're at a deal. <laughs> we we right. we made a deal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So no thirty. No. No. no deal. It would it would no work. Deal. So my point is, is that whole thing is you, like you I would guess also reject it, Bobby. The, no thirty million for you. The journey. No. The journey. It is about the journey. Life What's the is, difference between well, you have me now know. and me having thirty million dollars? It would not be different. Well, here's what I like right. about both money of you. doesn't fix or change. Right. Much. This here's what I like about the both of you. Is that you're not willing to come? You really do love what you're doing. It means yeah. that there is no amount of money that you can get paid to um, basically turn your back on your dreams. Well, and I, I like did that. say yes to the money. Just to you be did, clear. and then but you got un, you were then he unconvinced you. It is the wrong choice it, to say yes to the money is wrong because it is life is not about the end point. It's about the journey, you and that? that's that's a fucking hard lesson that I'm learning relearning every day because I'm was always the first kid in class to turn in my test. I was rush, 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 get everything done, just get to the point of being done with your work, but it's about the journey. Esther and I, uh -huh. there is certain there, there is a fix that you get. George, have you felt the fix? A little bit. I feel I am just happy where I am. I like always oh, try to be growing. Fuck you know, yeah, like, I, the journey is the destination. You I'm lucky that I wasn't born with a silver spoon in my mouth because that gives you a much different like view of success. Yeah. I came from like farmer parents, so I'm happy where I am, but always trying to get better. Yeah. I feel Love similarly George. like I didn't come from money so the fact that I have I'm able to make a little I'm like oh my god I'm amazing I feel great but mm -hmm. I want that doesn't mean I don't want more and I do I I I get what you're saying I know the fix I want the fix I want it's a drug but I'm also trying to shy away from that to try to detox yes I'm trying to to have both I'm trying to be healthy about it because mm -hmm. It you can't be this, babe. It's God. There's the gotta be a The high highs and the low lows is a is. I don't want that anymore. I don't want it either. I'm not saying that I want it. Okay. All I'm saying is is that 
I feel like I am in a, you know, kind of an even keel right now mm -hmm. in my life, right? In fact, I'm turning down certain jobs because it's just too much on my plate. Can you pass them my way? No. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and there's just certain things that um, I've made some really adult choices in the last couple of months that was like startling to me even. Really? Oh, yeah. Adult choices? Well, just cut this out, but I turned down a movie. Mm -hmm. What well, really? Why? I think this is worth talking about. Wait, why did you turn a movie down? Because it was. Um, well, I, I yelled a whole lot, but she did too. But um, but it made sense to me. It was like yeah. you, there was like an Asian accent, right? And it was a cool movie. It's a it's a vampire movie. I could say that. Yeah. Right. Probably a blockbuster kind of. Maybe a blockbuster kind of a movie with a real action director, and he. He zoomed me, right? We zoomed each other, and he was trying to convince me to do the movie. But at the end of the day, it's like, and the money was going to be good. It's going to be, you know, um, I, I might have taken if I didn't have this other movie I have doing. But no, no, you wouldn't have. Okay, I refuse. I honestly, uh, right. Bobby, twenty twenty one, you uh, have made such, you have blazed a path for a lot of Asian American people in the industry the fact that you would regress and do a film with an accent would break my heart yeah mm -hmm. here here here's i did the last time i did an accent was i was in the movie the dictator with sasha baron cohen yeah, which 15, and i did an accent oh yeah what it was a long time ago, ago. my yeah. point though is that i did feel guilt hmm. yeah for doing the accent and then i remember going to john cho and saying hey i don't ever see you do asian accent he goes i refuse i'll never do it <gasps> good for him you know what i mean and i just don't think that we should Wow. Right? But he goes, if you do one, Bobby, I won't judge you. I get it. You're a comedian and a lot of these roles, you know, you're a character and all that stuff. You know what I mean? He just says, I, I won't do it. Anyway. We should talk about, <laughs> Esther, what, what's that thing you wanted to talk about? Foods that we've never tried. Yeah. I. Are there any, okay. Are there any common everyday snacks that you've just actually never tried? I'm sure there are a lot because I'm just not a big candy person. Oh. So I eat, there aren't, there are very few chips I've never tried, but in terms of chocolates and snacks and candies. I've never, so I've never tried Cheetos and I've never really told anyone that before because I'm a big snack person. Why, why, haven't, why haven't you tried, tried it? They Cheetos. look scary to me. I don't like that bright orange fake cheese, like cheese whiz kind of, I don't like that scary to me. It's, I think they look disgusting. Uh, not even hot Cheetos. No. The darker orange. No. Yeah, they do look like um, they're shaped like also meteor. It's yucky. Or, or or like something that you would find the sur on the surface of Mars. But I love Doritos. I love Ruffle. I eat chips. I'm a chip queen. But I just so it's not like I think I'm better than chips. You should try Cheetos. Wait, hang on one second. So you're is it the cheesiness you don't like, or just the shape and the color? It's just the concept of like the it's all of it. I just want to say something to you right now, Esther. What? That in terms of what's inside something, the, the Dorito is the same, you know. It's just a different shape. Shape as. No. Yeah, yeah. That's it, not the same. So we have Cheetos so here. Are you, are you... We have Cheetos right here. Oh, are no. Are they fresh? Oh, yeah. Oh, my are God. They, they're flaming hot. Are they flaming hot? Yeah. They have to be. The flaming hot ones are the best. Yeah. Are they spicy? Yeah, very oh, a spicy. Bit. Very hot, okay very spicy. spicy food? I like to have some too. I'm hungry. Yeah, pass it. Yeah. I love Cheetos. I love Cheetos. Okay, hold on. I want to know what your expectations are in terms of taste. Oh, I think it's going to be spicy and... Okay, I, I think... I think, right? Close your eyes. Okay. Take one out. And I think you'll be delight, delightfully surprised. Just eat it. Mmm, what a crunch. I like it. <laughs> They're spicy though, huh? I like it a lot. Yeah. <laughs> I told you. They're really good. How great are they? I love it. Are regular Cheetos good too? Yeah. Oh my God. <laughs> regular Cheetos are not as good as the Flamin' Hot to me. Maybe can I have some? It's a little bit. Oh, it's good. It's so good. I know. It's it so right. fucking good. You missed out. It's really spicy though. Is that extra Flamin' Hot? Yeah, 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 extra. yeah, yeah. George! <laughs> 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 hot. Why would you do that? Here, babe. Yeah. No, why would you do that? Well, oh, Esther, your your spice um tolerance is low. You think this is not spicy at all to me? 
Yeah, baby, don't fuck your Filipino ways. Yeah. Some- Filipinos don't have spicy foods. What are you talking about? I'll eat them on the ground. I just oh breathe God. out fire. Um, have you tried Funyuns? Maybe years ago. Mm. Have you tried Combos? Years ago. Combos are my favorite. Combos are great. They give me a little tummy tummy. Yeah. Um, what else is good? Well, Bobby, thanks for making me. <laughs> I was gonna say thanks for being here, but I listen, guess. I you know listen, you know um, I know Annie's a coward. Well, don't slander. I'm not slandering her. She's in pain. She's in pain, but cowardly. In pain. Poor Annie. I she's, love Annie. She's on her way to pick up her oxygen tank right now. Oh, that's how much in pain God. she is. I, I love her. Sympathy. I have sympathy. It's, it's, okay. But um, I'm very happy to fill in any time. No, any. not any time. That needs to be a contract. <laughs> but um, thank you for having me on. Mm-hmm. Thanks for being here, Bobby. Thank you. It's been a pleasure to be your friend for a decade. But we've known that that long? Dude, yes. Probably longer. He well, can, barely knows me. No, I, I love you. What are you talking about? <laughs> and uh, I'll see you soon, Kalila, because we live together. <laughs> um, and thank you so much, Esther. Thank and you. To tell Dave I said hi. I will. I love I know him. you guys love each other. And uh, good evening and good night and farewell. Thanks for listening to Bloodbath, you guys. Don't forget to like this video, subscribe to this channel, go to sleepoverbyester.com for my stuff. My tie-dye is launching. What else? Um, I think that's it. Blah, Thanks, blah, blah. Bobby. That was fun. Thanks, guys. We'll see you next Thanks week. Thanks for doing it. Oh, yeah. yeah. Thanks, you guys. That was fun. Thanks, Bobby. Yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs>